Uh, homomorphic encryption is a type of privacy technology. Uh, privacy technologies allow organizations, individuals, companies, governments to share sensitive data without the fear of leaking any sensitive information and allows organizations to, and homomorphic encryption as a specific type of privacy technology, allows organizations to take data, encrypt it in a very secure way, send the data encrypted to third parties who can then run analysis on the data, all well decrypted without sharing any kind of decryption keys, anything like that. A really nice feature of homomorphic encryption, besides this malleability of sharing and things like that, is that it's known to be post-quantum. Uh, what this means is that it's very secure and resistant to these emerging quantum computing attacks. It, it's related. Um, Multi-party computation is another kind of privacy technology. One of the nice things about homomorphic encryption is that it allows quite a lot, quite a number of use cases for interaction. So for example, it allows, for example, I could take data, encrypt it, upload it to a cloud uh, environment, cloud computing environment, and then run computations on that data. It also allows the ability to mix and match for, for example, uh, multiple participants to encrypt their data and share data one-on-one -on -one, uh, and run joint distributed computations. It also allows organizations to each encrypt their data locally, aggregate that data at a certain point, say a cloud computing environment, and then run computations um, and, and so forth. And so a nice feature of homework encryption as compared to secure multi-party computation that you mentioned is the ability to basically mix and match where the computation is done and allow the ability to for, for, to, for to, allow the ability for participants to um, contribute data and then go offline and allow delegated access to information. I, I very firmly believe that the need for privacy technologies is driven for the need for collaboration. An important part of collaboration is trust and transparency and interoperability. A great way to formulate trust and transparency is through the use of open source technologies to allow very sensitive technologies that, or te technologies that allow computations on very sensitive data um, is to adopt the use of open source implementations of these technologies so that it can be ins inspected, evaluated, and, and approved. The other side of it, of course, is how standardization can take up these various uh, technologies to allow not just interoperability, but the transparency helps propagate the ability to uh, adopt these technologies as a standard security so that non-experts can trust the, 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 the ability of these technologies. You know, a line I like to use about homomorphic encryption and standardization and open source is that a rising tide floats all boats. By being able to collaborate with sensitive data and collaborate on standardized sensitive data, we all benefit as a society, globally uh, um, and across the world. Oh, very much so. Um, when Duality is working with our commercial partners, we're often asked about what are the emerging standards being used for, for this. Standards help uh, commerce, help commercialization, um, help the adoption of, of these technologies. Open source in particular um, is, I, I see as really the close cousin or, or, or near peer uh, of standardization and that allows people to know what they're getting without having to rely on any kind of black box proprietary technology, which I think is critical for the adoption of community standards. Very much so. Um, homomorphic encryption helps um, promote collaboration across jurisdictions, across geographies. Um, you know, example that I, I like to provide is that um, medical events, medical emergencies know no boundaries. You see that with the recent COVID-19 pandemic, we see it with cancer, we see it with, with any kinds of um, medical affliction. And 
you know, particularly look at, for example, that what we call in the United States rare, rare, rare disease or rare cancers. Um, any one hospital might see, you know, one specific rare disease once every 10 years. But if you look over globally, for example, uh, rare disease might strike, you know, hundreds of thousands of people per year, but just spread over the entire globe. It would be tremendous for humanity if research centers, medical research centers, could combine data globally across geographies and develop better treatments for these rare diseases. Because the unfortunate reality of rare disease is that any one rare disease affects many people across the world, um, and there are many such rare diseases. And a significant percentage of the population is affected by rare disease on a regular basis. Yeah, this this is this challenge of financial crime is quite pressing nowadays. Um, it, it's estimated that financial crime um, reduces the abilities of government to collect tax revenue, to help promote uh, social benefits for their citizens, um, and it, pr it basically promotes law lawlessness and, and general um, other crimes also. Um, one of the challenges of financial crime is that it also knows no boundaries, that there is a constant exfiltration of, of finances from one country to the next as part of tax evasion and, and things like that, um, as part of uh, uh, drug running and, 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 and terroristic type activities. Um, uh, of course, countries rightfully want to protect the privacy rights of their citizens. It's you know it's you know hard and fast rule. Uh, but at the same time, they want to, you know, for social good, reduce financial crime for all the things in, in all its kind of, you know, uh, malfeasance in, 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 in what it is. Um, privacy technologies such as homomorphic encryption allow governments and allow investigators and allow law enforcement to share insights, share data, access data in a privacy protected manner such that citizens' rights are protected but enables law enforcement to better fight financial crime across geographies. So the, the organizations really started um, from several of the open source library providers getting together and trying to brainstorm about how to make these libraries easy to adopt. Not necessarily easy to use in a technical sense, but easy to adopt from a, a trust and accessibility, adoptability standpoint. Um, one thing that we realized very early on, and early participants include um, you know, the, the team that was developing Palisade that I was part of, the HE Lib team from IBM, and the SEAL team from Microsoft. And what we realized very early on is that one of the easiest ways to, to uh, promote adoption of the technology is to develop international standards. Of course, I say easy, nothing is easy about international standards. Um, but we thought it was worth an investment of our time to try to build a consortium of homomorphic encryption enthusiasts, users, providers to show that there was benefits in adopting these technologies and enhanced benefits in standardizing these technologies. And so we created an, in, an informal industry consortium called homomorphicencryption.org, both to promote these technologies and promote standardization of these technologies. Uh, we've been very uh, fortunate to have participation from uh, prestigious organizations such as ITU, such as NIST, and several other uh, both national and international standards bodies to help guide us and help us with the broader adoption of and formulation of international standards for these privacy technologies, in particular homomorphic encryption. There are several great ways to get your foot in the door, and there are several great ways to, to actually get really involved. Um, we do have an organi organization website, homomorphicencryption.org. Uh, on there, we have um, our draft standards, list of participants, um, links to various mailing lists, and, and information about meetings that we actually host. Um, a major part of, of what we do is done through various working groups that we have formed and are continuing to propagate in, in this consortium. Um, we have working groups associated with the security standards, working groups associated with parameter selection. Uh, we're going to be starting working groups associated with ha hardware interactions and, uh, and, and so forth. 
So the best way to reach out far and away is to join our mailing list, reach out to some of the current members, and we're a very open organization, always, always very, very happy and excited to have new members that want to be energized and engaged with us.